now I'm going to do my final fast report. Okay. So, hey, wait a minute. We want that final one in writing. In writing. Final fast report. Everybody needs a fair witness to this one. No, it's going to be on YouTube. <laughs> okay. I think it's my ninth video on the fast, okay? So there's uh, 28 days, 35, 40, 56, 70, 91, 119 days. And we're going to call this my 126 day report. End of 19 weeks and end of fast. Now, I was going to... I was aiming at 122 days. I had had 17 meals in 18 weeks. And I figure 120, 119 is 18 weeks. But if I go four more days, it's exactly a third of a year. So I went for the 122 days. And then we went to a Chinese buffet to celebrate. <laughs> then I wasn't hungry the next day on number 123. And I wasn't hungry the next day on 124. And you get into the habit of not eating, you forget. So two days later, I still haven't eaten again. Well, that night I got tempted by a bowl of chili and a donut. Next day, I'm not hungry again. Next day, I'm not hungry again. 126 days. And that night I got tempted by another bowl of chili and a donut. So I said, okay, we're going to call it the end of fast now. I'm going to start snacking anytime I want. And uh, so, over 19 weeks of fasting, with only about one meal per week, max, a couple of little snacks in there, and only supplemented by the kidney milk, miracle water, for those people who know the code words, I managed to pull it off. Now, in my last report, I detailed all my health reports. Glycerides went from over four down to under one and a half. My good cholesterol went up, my bad cholesterol went down. But what's funny is the bad cholesterol didn't go down that much. So I'm betting that if my body didn't cannibalize the cholesterol, it probably wants it around. And therefore, I've been looking at articles about doctors arguing now that cholesterol is not the reason for heart attacks. It's sugar and, uh, and carbohydrates. So that might probably explain why after 19 weeks of your body in autolysis, that the cholesterol stuck around. So I'm not going to worry about my cholesterol levels anymore. Everything else seems to be normal. I went back to eating one meal a week for the last two weeks, and son of a gun, if I haven't gained 10 pounds, 12 even. Good so, well, I know, I know. I know. We were getting Everybody was scared for me, I know, yeah. but I didn't feel bad. Remember, 19 weeks, I wasn't hungry once. Most people go on diets or starving every day. So there's a big difference when you stop eating completely and you put your stomach to sleep than if you let it stay awake every morning for a few hours with a snack. And I pretty well proved to myself that it's easy to go long periods of time with no food and to push your body into autolysis. So I urge other people out there who uh, have health problems or overweight or whatever, give it a chance. What have you got to lose? Just give up food for a couple of weeks. Won't kill you. Might save you. So anyway, that's the end of my report. I'm now back to eating regularly, though much, much less. And what I do, it's a bit of a treat now, too. When you're eating once a day, it's, you plan it more, you know, it's more exciting. And uh, so anyway, end of the fast. Last report. Two weeks ago, I was at the by-election in Toronto Centre. I told you a bit about it at the Burlington meeting. This was biggest political meeting in Toronto recent election history. Eight community associations put this debate on. Huge flyer. Imagine that. Eight, 11 by 17. That's me, John the Engineer Turnell. I was in there. But, as usual, they were going to only allow the four big Marty party candidates to participate. I was excluded. Well, as I've done for many years, and dozens and dozens of times, I always go on stage, say, I got a right to stay. And when the moderators say, please, no, you can't stay, we don't want you here. I say, well, you and what army is going to move Jiu-Jitsu John out of this chair? Then it dawns on them they need a badge. Until I say, get out of here till you got a badge. 
Then finally they go out and call a cop, and that always takes 15 or 20 minutes. And I get to harass the moderators, us undemocratic people. So here's this huge meeting run by John Tory, who'd been a candidate, leader of the Ontario Tories in a by-election, where I had to go and do the same thing, but they were ready for me. Cops had me out of there in one minute. But he should have known what I was going to do, and he was the moderator of the debate, and he didn't tell them what I was going to do. So I showed up there, they were completely unprepared. Well, here are the pictures from the Toronto Star, okay? And the Globe and Mail reported the debate was held up by half an hour by John Turmel, who was not invited to this debate of the four major parties who disrupted proceedings until police had him taken away. Anyway, the point is the Toronto Star took all these great pictures. This was like Jarvis Collegiate. Huge auditorium packed in the rafters right to the balcony. You gotta be pretty stentorian to be heard across the whole room, right? And I was. And the Toronto Star took all these pictures while I'm alone on stage and nobody can move me till the bed shows up. And of course, my cameraman got it all. But finally, you got to be a little stentorian. Where's my favorite picture where I got my mouth wide open, you know? <laughs> but uh, so finally, the cops did come in. But here was my point I've all told you about Fukushima. And if it goes, it's going to kill the Japanese people. And once they're dead three days later and they haven't been cooling their other two dozen nuclear fuel dumps, they're going to go in a cascade. And they're going to take out half of China and India. And three days later, when their people are dead, there's no more cooling, their dumps are going to go. So when Fukushima goes, it starts a cascade across the planet of nuclear extinction. John, yeah, so, he's such an optimist. So I titled my speech, Greatest Pre-Extinction Speech in Human History. <laughs> and I'm giving the speech and I'm explaining to the crowd, and I managed to get it out, even though I got a lot of angry people, how we could pay, like in Argentina, they were broke in 2001, all paid off in 2006. The unions took bonds that they could use for hydro taxes, medical and licenses, so everybody could work. So I said, I want to use bonds to pay nuclear guys to bury nuclear. So my last line before the cops came in, and I told them about the government turning off the fallout detectors a few days before the nuclear coup in BC. March 25th, Health Canada announces we are reducing the frequency of collection of data. Yeah. They didn't say reducing to how low. They already had 85 readings this year. Oh, we're going to 12 a year from now on. We're seven years in advance. But anyway, they shut them down, and I'm telling the people, I called it. I warned you duck and cover. Baby deaths tripled in BC. Check it out. And my last line was, I want to tell you how to bury nuclear. And before you're like the BC babies, before I have to say I was right, and in come the police to take me away to the applause. So, the guy who wanted to tell him how to pay the bait and bury nuclear before the fuse blows gets carried off to applause, and they won't find out how to save their lives. You should have had Rob Ford with you. Yeah, well, anyway, yeah. that doesn't bother me, personal points. So that was the end of that election, but that was kind of neat. The biggest debate in Ontario history got busted up for a half an hour one of the most effective protests I ever did, and it got suppressed completely by the media, except for that one little mention in the Globe and Mail about a half an hour disruption by little old me. Okay, that's my report for this week. Great.